The Sith took everything from me. Ripped me from my mother's arms, murdered my brother, used me as a weapon, and then cast me aside. Abandoned me. Once I had power, now I have nothing. Nothing. Welcome, my young apprentice. Today we will learn the life of Darth Maul, a powerful Sabrak Sith whose anger kept him living long after it was believed he had died. The mystical planet of Dathomir, located in the Quill Sector. Like all things in the Force, there is a balance of light and dark. And on Dathomir, the darkness was significantly overpowering. A matriarchal society where the men were used as slaves, fighting to become great warriors to serve the sisterhood who ruled. Mother Talzin, the powerful leader of the Night Sisters, had two sons who she loved, but as tradition dictated, would send to become warrior slaves in the Brotherhood. Until the birth of her third son, a velvet skin. The boy was born on the planet of Irodian and brought to Dathomir. On his first birthday, the child would be tattooed, which was tradition for the Night Brothers. Mother Talzin felt the connection and strength that her son had through the Force and wanted to protect him from being enslaved. Talzin made an acquaintance with the Dark Lord of the Sith who she believed was interested in training her in the dark ways of the Force. But the Dark Lord instead took her son Maul to train as a Sith. Darth Sidious could sense the dark side power flowing through the infant. The raw power in the boy would be easily crafted into a dangerous weapon of the Sith. In the early years of his life, Maul would be raised on Mustafar. The only natural light the boy would see would be the orange and red glow radiating from the massive rivers of lava. A droid called TDD-9, programmed at the hand of Darth Sidious, trained and tormented Maul, becoming his abuser and his nurse. The droid showed him holocrons and demanded all of Maul's downtime for vigorous exercises. Darth Sidious would visit Maul on occasion, demanding Maul call him Master Sidious, but still neglecting to reveal that he himself was a Sith Lord. Maul would be trained relentlessly, not being told of his own force sensitivity Sidious then took Maul to the planet of Tossin. They walked on the now dried up ocean floor. As Sidious questioned Maul about what he saw, looking around at nothing but stones from every direction, Maul responded, Rocks. An answer which would earn him a rock at his back. As the questioning continued, the rocks flew at Maul until he lifted them, and in his anger sending them flying towards his master. Having passed his test, Maul was then taught the ways of the fall. Sidious forced Maul to breathe in the ashes of a long past Sith brother. Maul could feel the pain of the dead Sith. He heard the scream sensed the agony as if it was his own. And when the hallucination ended, Maul stood with a newfound longing for revenge. Maul endured much more gruesome lessons, hardening and breaking his mind and body. Sidious was needed on other planets as his political career was growing. 
more would be sent to the planet of Olsis to be trained in the Academy of Assassin. He was not allowed to use his full powers while at the Academy. Mole was able to get by using sheer steel. No help from the foes. Until three years into his training, his Mole thought looked up to him, attacked him with the intentions of killing him. In rage, Mole tapped into the force, jumped above the group, blocked their blast of fire, and began to shoot at them. It was practice rifles. It would still cause a great deal of pain. Mole was later punished by his master for healing his ability for one fight could foil the larger plan at hand. During a hunt called the Gora, Mole was out in the wild alone when four creatures with riders on their backs approached Mole. Revealing themselves as the Night Sisters. Cities arrived, preventing Mole from being taken off world. Mole went back to Oris to kill all at the Academy. After slaughtering everyone he ever known, everyone he ever bonded with, Sidious knew his heart was full of darkness. Mole was eventually passed out to the planet of Hyori, a planet made up of large deserts, high mountain ranges, and masses of swamp land. Here, Mole would take his final test to become a Sith Lord. Mole spent a month running from a combat droid, being tormented, unable to sleep most nights. Being gravely injured, Maul was able to survive. Sidious had finally found him, hiding in a cave with broken brain and injured leg. Maul's eyes lit up for the first time ever looking upon his master, but the glow quickly faded as he learned he must have one final battle. Mole conjured up all his strength and pain to stand and fight. Palpatine ignited his lightsaber and handed one to Mole. The battle was swift, with every attack parried by Sidious. Mole slowly advanced until Sidious force pushed Mole's lightsaber away and swept down to slash Mole. Before the crimson blade could cut through the flesh of Maul, he leapt out and bit the hand of his master, drawing blood. Maul then realized his master only held a train blade. Most impressed, Sidious granted Maul the title of Darth Maul, a Lord of the Sith. Now a fully fleshed Lord of the Sith. It was time for Mole to get a lightsaber, which best suited his fighting style. This would be the double-ended lightsaber. Lord Mole would do as his master bid him, traveling the galaxy in secret, fighting giant wild beasts, while completing tasks that would further his master's grand plan. Mole was tasked out to rescue a Nymordian, who was a member of the Trade Federation, an organization which would play a huge role in Sidious' plan. When arriving to save the Nymordian, Maul learned of a Jedi apprentice that was captured and being auctioned off. Maul slayed all the lifeforms on board, including the Nymordian he was meant to rescue. Maul ventured off to find this Jedi, to give his blades their first taste of Jedi blood. Maul, knowing he could not risk using his powers in public, would find himself needing help from a few mercenaries along his secret side quest. Maul was able to steal the Jedi prisoner from her captors, needing her assistance when soldiers were sent to seize them. 
Together they fought valiantly, until the time to fight each other came. She impressed Mole with her swift, sharp parries, but alas, Mole cut her down, fulfilling his quest for first Jedi blood. Upon his arrival to Coruscant, Darth Sidious revealed his knowledge of the incident, being most proud of his apprentice lustful blood. Darth Maul would be cast out on finding a royal starship which escaped a blockade on Naboo that the Trade Federation was responsible for. Darth Maul sent a transmission to the starship using fragmented holograms of Seal Dibble, the governor of Naboo. A response stating the Queen was safe was all Maul needed to track the Naboo cruiser with the Jedi and Queen to the outer rim planet of Tatooine. Upon arriving to the desert wasteland of Tatooine, Mold released three probe droids to search for the Queen and her ship. Mold discovered the ship as the old Jedi Master was attempting to get on and depart. Mold sprang out to battle, but within moments, the Jedi and the Queen's royal ship was far off into hyperspace. Maul returned to Coruscant to report the events to his master, expecting punishment only to be cast out to Naboo, as the Queen wished to return to be with her people. The battle was intended to take place far from the royal palace. But a small group, which included the two Jedi, infiltrated the city, freeing pints, and getting to the main hangar bay. The Jedi Qui Gon Jinn and Obi Wan Kenobi would be met by Maul, a black figure in a hooded robe, igniting his crimson double blades. Maul could sense the fear of his adversary. The Jedi ignited their wings while instructing the rest of the group in the other direction. The blades swirled through the air, swirling and cutting at Maul as he deflected and parried each blow. Maul fought with much grace, using the force as he wielded, kicking one Jedi, causing them to split up, allowing for Maul to lead the older Jedi into the energy shaft which he planned as the best room to slaughter them. The Jedi would deflect every blow, no matter the spin or flip Maul used. Maul had to admit the Jedi was a decent match, but he knew it was time to finish him, so he struck him with his lightsaber. The Jedi, stunned before the crimson blade was driven through his chest. The younger Jedi fought but was outmatched, getting tossed down a shaft in the center of the room. The Jedi managed to hold on in his anger and used the force to leap up and slice Darth Maul through his torso, sending him falling back into the abyss. He was then shipped to the trash planet of Lothos Maya, where he would spend the next 10 years having no real memory and hardly even a mind left. Mole was able to make spider-like legs piece together from scrapped droids he found. He was forced to eat whatever creatures he was fortunate enough to find. Mother Talzin was able to discover that her son was still alive, so she sent Maul's brother to go and find him, bringing him back to Dathomir. Talzin was killed during a CIS attack, but her spirit lingered on Dathomir, and she would use the dark side magic to clear Maul's mind and help him to be whole again. His spider legs were replaced with two battle drawer legs. Then she disappeared, leaving the two sick sons to rule the two dead. Maul's brother explained the ongoings of the last ten years, which included him being trained by Count Dooku for a short time, before realizing he was stronger than him and leaving. 
Maul and his brother began traveling the galaxy, killing the Jedi Master and their apprentices. Until Maul decided that the two needed to act as more traditional Sith, taking the role of Master and having his brother be his apprentice. This would be the first step in Darth Maul becoming the head of the galaxy's most notorious criminal organization. Maul makes connections with Mandalorians, which swear their allegiance to Maul. For a short time, he sits on the throne of Mandor. Maul and his brother Savage face cities. All cities proved to be too strong for the two, killing Maul's apprentice and taking him prisoner to the planet of Stygian Prime. The Mandalorians who bound themselves to Maul called themselves the Maul Demons and carried out a rescue mission, escaping Maul from the tortures he was undergoing. Maul was able to connect with his dead mother through the force, gaining wisdom on how to be successful in capturing Count Dooku. Darth Sidious traveled back to Dathomir to rescue Dooku and face off with Mother Talzin once and for all. A victorious battle for Sidious, Maul was able to escape and then went into hiding knowing cities would now be searching for him. Maul would travel to the old Sith world of Malakar. After hiding out for years, surviving Jedi of Order 66 found a much older Maul, but so did the Empire. Maul escaped before Darth Sidious' new apprentice were to arrive. In obtaining a Jedi in Sith Holocron, Maul had a vision, and he knew that Obi-Wan Kenobi lived. Maul would search Tatooine's brutal desert surface for months. Maul finally found Obi-Wan for a final battle. A swift battle of blue and red blades, ending with Maul being slashed down the chest. His last words. If you've enjoyed this holocaust, please like and subscribe below. The force is strong with the apprentice.